Well, thank you very much. I'm just going to share my screen and start the video. Uh, and um, the first thing I'm going to say is a take home message, which is uh, I was brought up uh, by my mother who had a book on her, her shelf by Dr. Benjamin Spock, a famous book from the 1950s on baby care. And um, the first opening lines are, are trust yourself, you know more than you think you do. And I think that's my message, my take home message to everybody who's going to uh, do online teaching, perhaps for the first time. Um, really do not worry about it. Um, over, I've done a lot of online teaching over the years. I've done a lot of uh, online uh, lectures. Um, and I have to say there are two things I, I have stopped doing. One is I don't use videos. You notice you don't see a picture of me. It simply uses up bandwidth and is a distraction for all, especially me. Uh, and the second thing is I don't really have very whizzy slides either. Obviously, I put the mathematics on when I need to and I annotate. I have a tool for that, of course, when I need to. But I don't do too many things when I give online talks. And I think probably if you're going to uh, be thrown in the deep end, as many people are going to be this coming autumn, if not already, uh, then uh, I would suggest you go down the um, more is less route. So, um, let me now um, move on to my uh, first slide. Okay, so I'll just tell you a little bit about the Open University's MSc program. Open University is a distance learning university in the UK. Actually, the master's program in mathematics is very long standing since the 1980s and has about uh, 400 uh, plus students uh, taking it. Uh, we, they normally take uh, about six years, between two and six years to complete six 30 credit modules, you know, largely, you know, one or two modules a year. And we have pathways in pure and applied mathematics, but not statistics. And the the pathways culminate in a 30 credit dissertation, which is like unusual. Most MSc programs have more weighting to the dissertation than we do. But the important thing to appreciate is unlike most of the Open University modules, which have very high, uh, good uh, uh, module materials that have been polished, uh, we in fact use very good textbooks and write uh, wraparound notes and exercises to a set book. And that's the modus operandi for the MSc program and it's worked very successful, successfully for many years. Uh, the course, the support is is largely down to our network of specialist tutors and academic staff and we also have well in principle anyway twice yearly face-to-face -face weekends one organized by the school and one organized by the student mathematical society uh, and our assessment is is just for uh, formative assignments and we still do examinations in case that's something that you're considering abandoning it's something that we I think uh, feel very important to, to continue in some way and our student group, well, they're great students, uh, I have to say, and um, they're largely retired or professionals who are studying for interest, uh, which I'll say more. And they're, of course, uh, rightly uh, quite demanding at times, and our age profile is, uh, roughly speaking, from age 25 to, well, you name it. We had a student in, in her 90s, I think. So uh, that's how, it's, uh, how our program is. It's not open access, by the way. You, we do expect people to have uh, a 2-2 two -two in mathematics or a 2-1 in, in another uh, degree with a high mathematical content. But we do look at non-standard uh, applicants. So there, there ends the advertisement uh, for the OU Maths program, MSc Maths program. Um, so I'm going to talk about community. Um, and the importance of community. I know it's a cliche to talk about the loneliness of the long distance learner. I don't know who came up with the phrase, but it is a truth. We are dealing with people who are distant and remote from us in many ways, and we have to bring them in. And we have to bring them in both collectively and individually. And dealing with this issue is something that most face-to-face -face universities have not had to deal with in the past because the students have been there, hopefully at any rate, they've been attending classes and if they haven't, well, there are mechanisms for catching up on them. But uh, largely speaking, we don't know what our students are doing most of the time and sometimes they're stuck and sometimes they don't want to ask, they're embarrassed to ask and, and we need to make sure that they're included. The other thing we need to do is build support networks. We don't have the library or the common room or the, uh, the bar to, to, uh, for students to, to collaborate and, uh, on, on exercises and things like that and to discuss mathematics. We need to build those support networks and that's part of the, the community that we build other support networks. We use our community to enhance and extend learning as I say most of our students are are really motivated uh, for uh, uh, you know sort of largely for non uh, career reasons and and we want to uh, extend their interest and, and their understanding uh, 
Um, and finally, we need to, some people need to ensure attendance for regulatory reasons, and we want to make sure no students are left behind. So I look on this as a sort of extension of the famous uh, Rethian mission of the BBC to educate, to inform, to entertain. And, and we do exactly everything in, in, that's involved in that. We broaden mathematical horizons, we hold events, we hold lectures, we, we tell people about what's going on in the mathematical world. So for example, we point to obituaries of John Conway and Robert May just recently. Uh, we, we inform obviously the, the things we have to tell students they need to know that we tell them about. We deal with their queries. Of course, there are lots of queries recently over the whole COVID-19 business. Um, and uh, we also tell them about career related things and all, all the stuff we have to do. But we also entertain us. And this is all the sort of thing that I'm sure you do in your universities already. Uh, but um, our entertainment on, online is, is slightly different, I think. But um, we, we, we do things like, uh, you know, we have put on talks of general interest interest, um, uh, both uh, research talks and more, more uh, undergraduate level courses, uh, talks. Um, and we've also pointed people to May Day Madrigals in which one of our colleagues uh, um, participated and in, indeed uh, pub quizzes and things like that, though that, that wasn't done online. We also consult, and this is where we extend, I think, the Rethian message, um, mission. Uh, we, we consult. Uh, we're, obviously, we want to know what our, the students think of, of what we're doing, of, of, our, of our modules and of our, our structure. I, I personally have uh, consulted students on our, our performance, which was in part good and part not so good in the uh, postgraduate taught experience uh, uh, survey. Um, and we consult and propose changes to the curriculum, that sort of thing. And we also listen to them, to their concerns, to their complaints, um, hopefully not formal complaints. Uh, and we, because students may not always be right, but they always uh, are right to be, to be heard. Um, and we involve them in not just uh, formally through the mechanisms that exist everywhere, but also through, uh, you know, staff student interactions and student student interactions, which of course uh, we are keen to foster. So we have a blended approach. We do have face-to-face -face things, at least hitherto we have, online events. We use social media, although I counsel against using social media actually too much um, for reasons I'll go into in a moment. We use traditional forums a lot, and I don't uh, apologize for that. Um, I think that's an excellent way of building a community. Um, I know they've been used for 20 odd years in, in universities as a way of delivering materials for students and things and answering queries, but uh, the traditional forums are actually a great thing. And of course, because we're dealing with students that are, who are remote, we deal a lot in email and telephone support and our network of tutors do that. The OU has a diverse student community and we had this excellent talk about uh, accessibility uh, just a minute ago, but our community is slightly more diverse than you might uh, think. Of course, we, we deal with people who, who are in secure environments, which is largely prisons, who, who don't have access to, or have limited access to the computer and uh, let alone the, the internet. But we also have a large, number of students who have disabilities uh, of a psychiatric um, nature or or who are autistic and they provide uh, a, a very much a different challenge especially when we're talking about community because we want to involve them as well uh, in in our community as much as we can um, so um, mindful of the time we use Moodle forums uh, with a, and we have a very high student participation of all sorts. We, we have um, forums, obviously, that are dedicated to the math teaching in the, the actual mod modules, but we also have uh, forums that are dedicated to more general topics. And we have high student participation, both active and passive. Um, uh, moderation we find is actually essential but moderation isn't a uh, moderation in the sense of of trying to to control what's said although there are occasions where that needs to be done um, but but it's actually to encourage uh, our, uh, student participation and to answer any queries that students might have um, our module forums are augmented by this postgraduate cafe I'll go into in a moment uh, but any essential communication something the students need to know uh, we have to do via some form of internet briefing or or email if necessary to to ensure every student uh, gets the, the, the message uh, oh by the way a uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum I think that dates me uh, a little uh, after all that's from the 60s and I would say that we have to be mindful of, of a number of things one is of course <laughs> it's age related cultural references uh, such as that or, or, or indeed uh, sort of cultural references that not every student would be familiar with if they happen to be not uh, from the United Kingdom 
And of course, there's always the danger of, of misusing humor, uh, which I'm for sure we all know about uh, with regard to the internet. So we're mindful of that when we, we try and build a community to make sure we're inclusive. So here's our postgraduate ca cafe. I, I, I chose this because this was the, 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 the list of topics uh, that uh, we had open. And of course, it's not very interesting this week because people are focused uh, on the assessments that, that are coming up because we decided to go ahead with our examinations, although they're going to be remote examinations in which students have uh, 24 hours to download, complete and upload their answers. Um, which is quite a stressful thing to do, actually, especially if you're under lockdown, whatever the situation that pertains in a week or two's, a week or two, uh, two's time is. Um, but this is the sort of things that we do. We have uh, our, um, our standing things that we, we um, for example, um, we're trying to get students to get more involved in the library and in related to employability issues. And of course, we're failing miserably because students rightly are interested in what it concerns them. And most of our students are not interested in using our library facilities, excellent though they are, and they're not interested in, in career related things. Some are, but most aren't. Uh, but so but we feel obliged to provide this uh, option for them. Um, we very keen thing the students are, are to introduce themselves, uh, which can sometimes be uh, difficult because some students do give too much information. <laughs> I can say they've tried, uh, partly because uh, they've, uh, some people have, you know, had a lot of adversity and have got to where they are through coping with that adversity and they want to share it. But when you have a, a forum that's potentially open to 175,000 people, uh, one has to be a little bit mindful about how much personal information people should share. Um, but um, largely, uh, the, the, the topics we, we deal with um, are, all, as I say, they vary from, here you see a colleague posed uh, a, um, uh, a post uh, to do with uh, the recent uh, breakthrough by Lisa Picrilla on in knot theory and Conway's knot problem. And here's something I posted, and of course I'm using this shamelessly to advertise. We, we did advertise the opportunities that might be coming up in the a few weeks time uh, for tutor uh, vacancies for the OU. And since I've got you here as a captive audience, I might as well also advertise uh, that opportunity to you. Please go to the Open University website and register an interest if you're interested. Unfortunately, it's only open to people who are resident in the UK or the Republic of Ireland, but otherwise uh, it's open to all mathematicians. Sorry, Ben, were um, you showing a slide there that um, had something on? Because I'm still seeing postgraduate cafe. That's correct. I haven't got. I haven't moved on from there. Oh, right, now right. this is the, here. Are my top tips. I, I won't go for for much longer actually because I'm, uh, I'm conscious it's the end of the day. So there's nothing new under the sun. Everything I say, you 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 can work it out for yourself. I mean, for once, uh, there isn't anything particularly any technical thing that I'm going to say that's a, that's a important here. Only that in in building up a community, it's essential to be personal with people. We at the OU we use. First name terms, our, our vice chancellor signs his emails, Tim. So um, we are very personal and I, I recommend that as a way of building up community, always polite absolutely always polite under all circumstances and patient too because uh, after all you can never be sure whether the, qu the, stu the question the student is, an uh, is, is a uh, asking for the umpteenth time uh, you know is actually um, they've actually had access to the, uh, the answer you've given before. So patience is essential. I recommend an informal style, an authoritative style and honesty. And you'll see honesty is an important feature of the way we approach things. I'm, I believe that one should be proactive and reactive. In other words, we, we do actually uh, put forward topics for, for students to discuss as well as react to, to the topics that students uh, want to, to raise. But always occupy the high ground. I really counsel you not to get involved in, in anything that is like uh, the, the, the flame wars that used to take place in the 1980s and 90s. Uh, always occupy the higher ground. Moderation, as I mentioned, it's essential, but uh, it should be, it has to be timely. That's the other thing. It's no use waiting for a week. Students need the answer now. So in fact, monitoring the, uh, the forums on a daily basis is essential. And building community is hard work. It requires persistence, but it's rewarding. And um, perhaps I'll, I'll just uh, finish. This is not actually my last slide. It's my penultimate slide. It was the last slide of a uh, briefing that I gave to the whole uh, MSc student group, um, this, um, which um, 
uh, was originally planned in January before the whole COVID crisis came upon us, but uh, metamorphosed into a, a briefing uh, principally uh, about our contingency planning for, for COVID. It had a very high student participation rate, as you can imagine, um, and um, it was very successful. This, this wonderful um, um, rainbow, by the way, I got from a, uh, a community group in Leeds, uh, with their, used with their permission, by the way. Uh, so, um, I just wanted to uh, finish now with this slide, uh, which is, I'll leave it for you to, to read. Uh, it's indicating the reward that comes from a very um, amount, large amount of hard work, not just by me, but by the whole team over a number of years, my predecessor too, building up the trust uh, with our student group. And this was the student response. I didn't make this up. I didn't particularly select it, actually. It just was, was the right ones. Um, and, um, but it shows you that by, by focusing on a, uh, on a student-focused approach, student-centered approach, treating students as people, not as commodities, as we so often have to do sometimes in university, it seems, but treating them as people it has many, many benefits. And this is the reward that we get. So I'll just stop there. I wanted to give a, a, a very relaxed and uh, upbeat talk, and I hope you found it uh, uh, useful uh, in some ways. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Right, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll plow straight into the questions. Um, um, okay, so there was one in particular I'd, I'd spotted that said, uh, Ben, how do you foster active participation in Moodle forums? Okay, uh, so Moodle forums. Well, first of all, we use Moodle because uh, that's the university uh, system, but also it's fantastic for mathematics. Uh, I, th I think, uh, uh, in my view, uh, you, can, you can really do well uh, communicating mathematics via the Moodle forum. Um, but how do you foster participation? The answer is uh, that you, well, first of all, I pose questions. Um, my questions tend to be more of a sort of whole MSc uh, issue. So they, they rarely deal with actual mathematics, the questions I pose, but uh, sometimes we do actually uh, pose mathematical problems and um, uh, for people to think about. Um, so that's one way uh, to be proactive in, in putting things forward for students to discuss. We consult students. That actually generates a lot of, of feedback from students. If we, we're proposing to make any changes to the curriculum, we ask them uh, what they think. Uh, and we take note of what they say, uh, which uh, is, is one way of building, uh, building trust. Um, but let me tell you a truth. I've taught online for many years now, for over 12 years. And if I had a magic wand that could get students to speak during online tutorials and I could wave it, I would wave it for all of you because I have not found that magic wand. Right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. It. We could all do with that magic wand, couldn't we? Um, so, okay, so maybe we could uh, answer this, this question. Um, could you say a little bit about how well student feedback uh, is on uh, Postgraduate Cafe? Student feedback, in what sense? Yeah. Well, well, what, well, what, what they how, it? Oh, they love it. Yeah. I mean, the, the truth is that uh, it's a, a great forum for them to discuss anything they want. Um, not just, mostly things to do with mathematics, but occasionally it ventures uh, elsewhere. Uh, you know, we had some discussion about COVID-19 and about mathematical modeling within COVID, you know, of COVID-19. And, and um, we pointed them to various online talks that we held, uh, principally at Oxford, for example. Um, so, we, you know, there's a lot, been a lot of um, positive feedback from students about this, the, the, um, the, the forums, and it has a high participation rate. That having been said, there are students who study at the OU precisely so they don't have to interact with people too much, and they don't participate, and I think we have to be uh, tolerant of that. Uh, that's, that's part of being a community, is to accept that some people don't want to be part of the, uh, the active community. As long as they're not left behind, that's fine. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, 